The Gold Cup is scheduled from July 10th to August 1st of this year, and it's going to be an exciting roster. We're breaking it down right here on 11 Yanks. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. I'm Pete Douthit. We talk about USMNT stuff. Now, last week, I did a video all about the Nations League roster, which is going to affect this video, the Gold Cup roster. To be clear, both of these videos are my best guesses of what I think Burhalter will do, not necessarily what I would do. Now, if there's somebody that you really think should be on this roster and they're not here, go watch the other video because maybe the reason they're not on the Gold Cup roster is because I had them on the Nations League roster. Also, if that person is Daniel Lovitz, it might be time to check in with your mental health care provider. Okay, so let's dive right into it. But before we do, guys, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. We got new videos Sunday and Wednesday. If you're already subscribed, smash that notification button so that you never miss a video. And also a quick plug for the Patreon. If you enjoy my content and you want more content with game clips, go check out my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Okay, let's do this. All right, goalkeepers, Ethan Horvath, David Ochoa, and Sean Johnson. Personally, I would like these three to be there. Um, Sean Johnson provides some experience. He's good playing with his feet. He's sort of the old experienced head that you want. And then Ethan Horvath and David Ochoa should be fighting it out to be the number one, or perhaps they could switch off, at least in the group stage. A lot depends though on how David Ochoa performs for RSL this season, and also on whether or not Ethan Horvath can find a club. He's been a bench player for a little bit too long. His contract expires this summer, and hopefully he can find a club where he'll be the number one, even if that is back in MLS. He's at an age now where he does need to be playing. If David Ochoa and Ethan Horvath aren't impressing in training, I can definitely see Sean Johnson starting the tournament, but both Ochoa and Horvath have higher ceilings, and I would like to see one of them try and claim that job, especially because we do not have enough keepers with tournament experience. Fullbacks time, DeAndre Yedlin, Brian Reynolds, George Bello, and Sam Vines. This one was pretty straightforward for me. Uh, some other right back options are Julian Araujo and Aaron Herrera, but neither of them really impressed that much during the Olympic qualifiers. DeAndre Yedlin, as I've said before, has technical deficiencies. In my opinion, he's mostly a speed merchant with very poor technique. When you compress time and space, he struggles. That being said, he has a lot of experience and he has been playing well in Turkey. And after Cannon's disastrous defensive performance against Jamaica, I do think it's worth taking another look at Yedlin and just seeing if he could be a backup option to Serginho Dest. This would be his chance to prove himself and demonstrate to Burhalter that he should be involved in World Cup qualifying. Brian Reynolds is the other right back and we saw him make his debut for Roma the other day. He struggled with his positional play. He struggled with the speed of play and most of the time looked lost and confused on the field. Now he's a 19 year old with half a professional season with FC Dallas, now starting for Roma who are chasing Champions League. So to a degree, that's to be expected. I still think he's got a very high ceiling, especially going forward, is more technical than DeAndre Yedlin, but still has a lot to learn. If he continues to improve with Roma this season, there's no reason why he can't try to win a starting right back spot during the Gold Cup. George Bello and Sam Vines are the two left backs who, in my opinion, are competing to be Anthony Robinson's backup. George Bello, for me, just has the edge right now. Sam Vines did not have a good tournament in Guadalajara. It's a shame that George Bello was not there. I think he offers a little more going forward than Sam Vines and has improved his defending 1v1, particularly when we talk about his starting position. Center backs actually look pretty good with Matt Miazga, Mark McKenzie, Miles Robinson, and Walker Zimmerman. Now I've said before what I think about Matt Miazga. I think he's unreliable. I think he's good for at least one goof up per game. And that's just not something that I think you want from your center back. Mark McKenzie is one of the new breed of center backs that can play with both feet. And his versatility being able to play at right center back or left center back is gonna be huge for this team. I'd like to see him start in the Gold Cup. He's been a little up and down for Gank, but I do think he's going to improve. Getting used to the speed of play in Europe when coming from MLS isn't always easy or straightforward, but he impressed me in his last start for Gank, and I still think he's one of our highest ceiling center backs in the pool. The only thing with Mark McKenzie that I think could hamper him from being a truly elite center back long term is his height. He's only six feet tall, and I do think that when it comes to aerial threats, that may hurt him in the long term. 
Walker Zimmerman is a very strong, solid MLS defender who is very good when the team is defending together. When he has to defend on an island, I think that's where he gets exposed. And if we're trying to be a possession team, that means we're gonna be pushing guys forward and Walker Zimmerman may be a liability at the back, especially when we face teams who are particularly good on the counter. Miles Robinson last started for the US in the January friendly against Trinidad and Tobago, and he actually played left center back in that game. He's clearly right footed, but I think he can play left center back if necessary. And I do think Greg will have him on this roster. That is if Carlos Bocanegra doesn't try and find a FIFA loophole to keep him in Atlanta. Central midfielders and guys, I really went out on a limb with this one. There aren't an abundance of six in this team. So I went with Andres Perea and Aiden Morris. Now, Andres Perea, we all know he was okay in Guadalajara. I don't think he impressed. His passing range is very limited in my opinion, but at least he will do the dirty work for you. And that is try and cover up for the center backs, protect them and hold the team's shape defensively. Aiden Morris was particularly impressive in MLS Cup last year and had a really good game against Real Esteli. And because we have a lack of true sixes in MLS, I think Aiden Morris could be the guy that stamps himself on MLS this season and shows Greg Berhalter why maybe, just maybe, he deserves a spot in the Gold Cup. Kellen Acosta. I've said what I think about Kellen Acosta before, but I actually don't think that Greg sees him as a six. He said right before the Northern Ireland game that we don't have any true sixes on this roster. And although I don't think Kellen Acosta should be involved with the national team, if you're going to have him here, I'd rather he play as an eight. First of all, he isn't ball secure enough to play as a six. He gives the ball away way too easily and cheaply. And if the six is doing that in dangerous positions, that allows the opponent to come straight down your throat. If he's gonna be on this roster, I'd rather he play as an eight, which is really where he plays for Colorado, because that allows him to drive forward with the ball at his feet and when given time and space, he can pick out a pass or even let out a thumper from outside the box. Luca De La Torre for me is the best midfielder on this roster. He showed really well in March in those two friendlies and is also having a very good season with Heracles. He would be the midfield maestro that holds this attacking team together. Paxton Pomacall is the most complete American midfielder in MLS. And I think if he stays healthy for the first three to four months of the season and balls out, he could easily be in this Gold Cup roster. Caden Clark, I went out on a limb with Caden Clark, but I do think that he is going to show this year why he would have been so valuable to have in Guadalajara. I think he's gonna have a great season. And with not a ton of attacking tens in the attack, I think that Caden Clark will show his quality and will do enough to get a look at the Gold Cup. Time for forwards now, and this is actually a pretty decent group. Jossie Zardes, Daryl DK, and Nicolas Gioacchini are the three forwards that I think we'll bring. Joaquini is versatile enough to play wide, although I do think he's best as a forward. And then the wide players will consist of De La Fuente, Yanez, and Chris Mueller. Zardes is Greg's guy. DK is balling out in the championship and may very well be at a Premier League club by the time the Gold Cup kicks off. Joaquini is often used wrong by his club and it's disappointing to see. Conrad De La Fuente, I'd like for him to get a loan so he can start playing at a higher level than the Spanish second division because I think he's better than that. And I think for his own development, he needs to get out of Barcelona for at least a season. Ulianes has had a rough time ever since he went to Wolfsburg, but every time he's put on the US jersey, he's played really, really well. I still think the kid has a very high ceiling and I wouldn't write him off too soon. I think getting him into a tournament environment like this is something that could help his form and his confidence. And maybe a good showing at the Gold Cup could even open up offers from other clubs for him for Wolfsburg. Chris Mueller had a really good year last year, and although I do think he's slightly overrated by some of the fan base, I think he's one of the few wingers that we could bring. Paul Ariola will very likely be in the Nations League roster, and I think Chris Mueller will use the Gold Cup to try to impress Greg. He isn't great 1v1 like Yanez and De La Fuente are, but he makes good runs into the box to score goals, works hard and is strong and athletic, if not particularly technical. Let's talk starting lineups, and this is the one that I would go with. Obviously, a lot of this has to do with how well these players perform over the next few months, but if I had to pick now, I would go Horvath in goal, Bello at left back, McKenzie and Miazga at center back with DeAndre Yedlin taking that right back spot. I'd take a flyer on Aiden Morris. I think the kid has a high ceiling. I think he's demonstrated 
If you can play in an MLS Cup final and win and hold your nerve and play well, I think you show that you're mentally able to handle the pressure. And I legit think if you give him three, four more months of development, there's no reason why Morris couldn't start at the six against CONCACAF opposition. De La Torre and Paxson Pomacall is a central midfield pairing that I would really like to see. Pomacall playing more as an eight or box-to-box -box midfielder with De La Torre orchestrating and pulling the strings with his skill, technique, and creativity. Uli Yanez and De La Fuente would be the wide forwards for me with Daryl DK wreaking havoc up top. This is the lineup that I think Greg would go with. Ethan Horvath in goal. Back four would be the same except for Sam Vines instead of George Bello. I think Greg has seen more of Vines and does seem to rate him higher. Although we don't really know because Bello has had so few opportunities to impress in the past with both his injuries and with being at a club that doesn't particularly like releasing Americans. Greg convinced Andres Perea to come and play for the US and I do think he sticks Perea at the six. I think he will play Acosta as an 8-10 next to De La Torre. I think Joe Aquini would play on the right, Ulianes on the left, and Greg's favorite boy, Jassi Zardes, up top.